so thank you all for coming tonight. Um, I'm very excited to uh, have mm -hmm. um, Jay Wu Park. Um, Hi, nice to meet you. Come uh, talk to us tonight about the graphic anatomy of uh, and drug techniques in the contemporary society, and also uh, primarily the work of um, Atali Bow Wow um, and their work of the graphic anatomy too. Um, um, so Atali Bow Wow was a firm. Uh, founded in Tokyo in 1992 by Yoshiharu Tsukamoto and Mamoyo Kajima. And uh, in your book, The Graphic Anatomy 2, they explore the, the question of the drawing um, as an anatomy of architecture and how does that pertain to uh, telling a, a bigger story of architecture and also um, how does that pertain to contemporary uh, design. Um, so, so they use the word anatomy um, mm -hmm. as a, a very fundamental part of uh, the title of the book. And this concept of anatomy is played throughout um, all their drawings. Um, so the word anatomy, in order to understand uh, this conversation, we must first define it. Um, and in, as defined by Encyclopedia Britannica, uh, anatomy is a field in the biological sciences uh, concerned with the identification and description of uh, body structures of living things. So the firm is known for their non-traditional approach to uh, graphic representation, uh, whereas traditional methods would uh, display the section, the plan, and perspectives uh, in separate drawings. The firm has really taken an innovative approach where they compress these drawings together in a way that goes beyond just the descriptive, but they are able to begin to represent uh, time. Time as, um, as an occupied space that exists neither before, during, or after the, the process of construction, but it all happens at once. So a common question often addressed to Atali Bow Wow is that what enables the intermixing of the plan and the occupied spaces that belong to different temporal orders and how does that support, support the argument that the graphic in itself is an independent project separate from the reality of what is constructed. So what is the role of graphics in documentation? It, in this sense, I mean, the you said they're they're keeping in the in the separate two different projects solely. F for me, it sounds like it's solely for their own good, which has nothing to do with the uh, with the uh, the actual project, the physical project. What do you think? Well, I mean, I think that um, they are doing it for their own good, but at the same time, it is polemical because what they're doing is that they're highlighting um, a process that every architect goes through. Um, it's, it's the idea, synthesis of the idea, and the realization of an idea. Um, and I think sometimes the power of the graphic as its own project is that it is able to, to not have to deal with the constraints of reality, not have to deal with the constraint of, of time. Um, and not have to deal with constraint of the physical material and gravity. So, um, I guess there's a, a question I want to ask you is that uh, a lot of Italia Bowell's drawings, they always mention uh, this idea of occupation. You know, you see furniture, you see people going about their day-to-day -day <clears throat> lives doing activities, but um, one thing I don't see is that there isn't a sense of grit, you know, because Grit comes with the idea of use and the idea of occupation. Yeah. So what do you think about that? So what you're trying to say is opposite to the, the concept of showroom. The showroom, their arrangement um, is predetermined. It doesn't reflect the independent, their uh, attitude or characteristics. For Bow Wow, um, everything is in a perfect place. It's not because um, it's determined by typical use, but it's the, the by time the furniture gets stabilized and find its perfect place. Not necessarily chair needs to be next to the desk, but it can migrate um, by over time by its use. 
so what you're trying to say is that Italia Bow Wow and their drawings show a change over time. The, the furniture found its place, its rightful place, not because it was des described to be there by the use, but because by individual attitudes about where um, they prefer the furniture to be. So there's a, a story embedded into it, and what the drawing shows is that, that while it's frozen in time, it, sh it showed that maybe perhaps the chair at one time may have mm -hmm. been next to the table, but over time it finally migrated and stabilized yeah. where its final resting place and is. And then the time collapse? Yes, and the time collapse yeah. in that sense. Mm. Well, um, so I guess my next question is this um, idea of uh, redlining. And this, it's the most like, it, it's the most clear in, in the cover of the book. Um, so the, the architect is, you know, now that they showed everything, that the time has been collapsed, right? And the drawing itself before the red line is similar to all the arguments we have made for every one of their drawings. But this one's different because they've gone back again to make edits. And um, I guess my question is, how, how does the red line uh, service in uh, showing that there's a, the project has a life of its own? Um, and how does this add to uh, the idea of occupation grit? So the drawing has a life of its own. The architecture shows this by making specific edits, not necessarily to just the building itself, but to the setting, to the characters as well. This shows perhaps that the drawings is evolutionary. The trees have perhaps grown, the dresses have that the girl is wearing has gotten lar longer or shorter. It clearly shows that not only does the architecture evolve, but the story as well. Um, and the redlining also shows the architect's preoccupation with the drawing. Uh, to edit and change it whether the project has already been built or not. Does the project has a life of its own, or perhaps grits has accumulated over time? Um, so uh, this this concept of the drawing becoming a project of its own doesn't seem to be a, a novel concept. Um, I mean, are there other uh, projects or architects out there in the field whom you think um, uses similar or different techniques to achieving to achieve this uh, this idea of like splitting a project or par paralleling one? A single project together? Um, maybe uh, um, at this moment I only can think of uh, one example, uh, Perry Culper. Um, both try to situate collapse few drawing together. Perry Culper projects on his drawings the plan and section as method of tie together object into the field in, onto the field. Um, he also um, uses uh, for 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 example this drawing um, there's a topography uh, and on top of it there's a grid line and on the grid line there's an object in motion and the the motion is represented with vector lines multiple vector lines on as if it shows the movement within the field so for him, maybe um, the time is uh, destabilized constant, while Bow Wow, time is stabilized instant. Hmm. Okay, well, thank you. I think that's interesting because I think what the drawing does, the anatomy of the drawing is not trying to paint a single picture, but is always trying to paint a reality in, uh, situated in a certain state. Um, and that state could either be in motion in constant motion, or that state, like in Italia Bow Wow, is frozen because it has been stabilized. But they're both, at the end of the day, reflecting on the architect's attitude to represent uh, a certain social reality. And perhaps that social reality can only be achieved in the drawing because the drawing, at the end of the day, has. You know, the sole ownership of the drawing belongs to the architect, and that's what makes it different from the physical project. 
Okay, well, that's all the time that we have. Um, well, Jay Wu Park, uh, yeah. thank you for coming. Thank you, Kelly. All right. All right. It was good.